Hi, this is the second video in the Splunk and Sysmon integration series. The first video was about Sysmon installation on the Windows 10 virtual machine. If you want, uh, you can look at the video through the link uh, shared in the description uh, section below. So just to give you the overview of what we are going to do in this video, uh, this is the network diagram showing the virtual machine's connectivity and the IP addresses are used for this Splunk Sysmon integration lab. Splunk instance will be running in the TP VM, which is a Threat Pursuit VM, and Splunk Forwarder is going to be installed in Windows 10 Virtual Machine, uh, which also has Sysmon already installed. The IP addresses of the Windows uh, Windows 10 Victim Machine is 192.168.2.128 with the subnet of slash 24, and the IP address of TP VM is 192.168.1.128 with the same slash 24 subnet. These machines are interconnected uh, through uh, PFSense firewall. So uh, let's head to the VMware uh, and do the required network configurations. Uh, let's first uh, do it on Threat Pursuit VM. Threat Pursuit VM is Cyber Threat Intelligence virtual machine developed by Mendiant and is a free to use tool for threat intelligence and threat hunter personnel. Let me know guys uh, in the comment section if you want a video tutorial on Threat Pursuit VM. I will be more than happy to create one for you. Right. So uh, the IP address of this machine is 192.168.1.128 with subnet of uh, uh, 24. right? And default gateway is 192.168.1.2. And the DNS I'm configuring as 8.8.8 oh, .8 because this machine is uh, going to connect to the internet. Right, so IP addresses are now uh, configured and let's verify them uh, because sometimes a VM creates issues and uh, require restarting the network interface card. So let's, let's, uh, let's open the command prompt and uh, check with IP config. Yes, so IP addresses now are in place as required. Let's move to the Windows 10 virtual machine and take the same action here as well. Let me open the network configuration panel first. And then I will enter the required IP details. Here IP detail, IP address will be 192.168.2.128 uh, with the subnet of slash 24 and uh, gateway will be 192.168.2.2. This machine is not going to connect to the internet, hence DNS details are not required. So let's close this network configuration panel. Also, let me inform you that Sysmon is already installed on this machine, so we just need to install the Splunk forwarder, but uh, before doing that, let's install and configure Splunk instance first. So let's move back to the Ted Pursuit VM and install the Splunk instance. So let me start the Splunk installer first. Right. Uh, let's keep all these things as default. Right. Click next. Then next again. So here uh, we have to enter the username and password details that we are going to use for login purpose. Right. So let me quickly uh, uh, do the needful. Right. Click next. Then click install. Okay, so uh, it will take some time uh, to get uh, it completed, right? Uh, so meanwhile, let me update you guys on one thing here. Uh, the Threat Pursuit VM offers many threat hunting tools uh, such as ELK, Jupyter Notebook, Threat Hunting Notebook, MISP, and Splunk as well. So Splunk was already installed and running in this VM, but I intentionally uninstalled it uh, for the sake of this video. And also the installed version uh, 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 was of older uh, version, so I uh, wanted to install the latest version of it. Right. So uh, it is going to take its own sweet time. Can't do much, but have to wait. Right. So uh, let's wait. Let let it get uh, completed. Okay. Um, installation is almost about to uh, complete. Just a few more seconds. Okay. Yes, it is done. Let's launch and log into the Splunk now. 
um, entering the username and password uh, that I just configured uh, during the installation. Uh, now we need to do some uh, configurational changes in order to successfully connect the Splunk forwarder. Uh, first thing is to open the listening port uh, 9997, which is a default port for receiving the data from forwarder. So uh, let's click on the uh, settings and uh, and uh, go to forwarding and receiving option, right? And then we will uh, click on the add port and enter the port that we need uh, to open uh, in the Splunk instance, which is 9997. Right, so this, this uh, port is now in place. The second thing is we should create the new index uh, which will we'll, uh, be naming it as a win event. Uh, this uh, index will be hosting the incoming Windows event from the uh, Windows machine. Right, so let me enter the name. Uh, the next thing I am uh, going to reduce the size to 50 GB though it is not required. Uh, rest I'll keep this uh, as default and click save. A uh, new index is in place. Um, we can see it. The size is uh, showing 1 MB although it is empty and do not contain any data. Let's verify it. Uh, let me uh, search the win, uh, win event index in the search and reporting app. So let's see if we'll get any data because it is already empty so we should not be seeing anything and the result should be uh, empty. Right, so no, to, no results are found. Uh, now move to Windows 10 VM and install the Splunk forwarder there. Um, so we will keep the things as default. Uh, let's click next, then next, and next again. Uh, here we need to select the types of Windows logs that we want forward to collect. I am selecting everything. Next, uh, here uh, enter the username and password. Uh, I am keeping it same as I used for Splunk instance. Right? So the username and password are both same. So let me quickly enter them. Then click next. Here uh, I'll enter the IP address of the deployment server, which is essentially the IP address of uh, Threat Pursuit VM. And the port will be the default 8089. Next. Again, I'll enter the IP address of the Threat Pursuit VM. Um, and here the port will be uh, the 9997 default port uh, for the forwarder. And then I click next and then install. Now this will take some time and uh, it will install the Splunk forwarder in the machine. Also the service will be created with the same name as Splunk forwarder. Right, so let, let's uh, give it some time to get uh, completed. And it is about to get complete. Yes, so installation is completed, uh, but in order to uh, successfully collect the sysmon uh, logs, uh, we uh, yet need to do some changes uh, to the content of input.com file of Splunk forwarder. Uh, this file can be accessed from the path uh, program files, uh, Splunk forwarder, etc, apps, Splunk forwarder, and then uh, local, right? Uh, this is the input comp uh, file. In this file, we need to add these four to five lines at the top. So let's do it. Uh, these line uh, will be going to instruct the forwarder to collect and send the small logs to the win event index that we created in the Splunk instance, right? So uh, let's save and close this file. And then we uh, need to go to the service manager and uh, we have to actually restart the Splunk forwarder service so that the changes uh, that we just make can uh, take their effect. 
right so let's uh, quickly do that let's stop the service for now and then we will uh, restart it right so it is almost done all right so the service have been restarted um, now let's uh, close this these windows and uh, let's move back to the thread pursuit vm uh, there we will search for the forwarded logs under main index uh, this is a uh, this is a splunk's uh, default index where all the process data is stored so if everything is working fine then we should uh, see the events at least under this default index so as we can see there uh, we are not receiving the logs yet uh, there is some issue so uh, let's troubleshoot that issues first let's first check if the listening port 9997 is active or not uh, for that uh, we can simply tell it to the splunk instance on port uh, 9997 and see if it's uh, getting successful or not right uh, so okay so uh, the standard service is uh, disabled by default in windows 10 machines um, hence i have to enable it first uh, before using it and then try uh, then I can in fact try again to turn at the port and check uh, its status so let me quickly do that right uh, okay so it is going to uh, restart in any moment all right so uh, now the telnet service is enabled let's recheck if telnet is successful then the port is actually listening so yes it is successful hence there is no issue in the listening of port now let's move to the Windows 10 VM and uh, see if we are able to telnet uh, the 9997 uh, port from here as well. For that, again, uh, we need to enable the telnet service uh, first and then uh, try to telnet to the Splunk instance on, uh, on the specified port. Uh, so let's uh, do it quickly. So uh, the services uh, uh, are now active and so let's open that mount port and try to tell it the Splunk instance on port triple nine seven so as we can see uh, it is not connecting successfully right now hence uh, there is a connectivity issue between the windows machine and that pursuit vm so let's uh, let's uh, log into uh, the pfsense firewall uh, which is in fact acting as a gateway for both the machines uh, so uh, we'll check if uh, the firewall rules are in place uh, which allow the traffic from a Windows 10 machine uh, towards 9997 and 8089 ports on the Threat Pursuit VM. So if uh, if, if I uh, move to the uh, to the required interface, uh, there uh, I can and in fact you can see uh, that uh, both the uh, rules are already in place. So that means uh, that that PFSense is not the culprit in breaking the connectivity. So it would be the Windows firewall then that is blocking the traffic. Uh, so now open the Threat Pursuit VM uh, Windows firewall settings, uh, and then there, uh, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to add uh, the rule uh, that allows the inbound uh, traffic from the Windows 10 machine IP address uh, towards the ports uh, 997 and 8089 right so let me do that as fast as i could without making any errors possible so i will take just few seconds to do it okay have to have the ip address of the windows 10 machine here and it is almost done now the required firewall rules are in place hence let's verify the connectivity from the windows 10 machine as we can see we are now successfully able to turn it to the third pursuit for your port on port 997 now head back uh, to Thread Pursuit VM and do the final configuration required for successful integration. For that, we need to go to the settings and click on Add Data and then select the Forward option. Here we will get the list of the forwarders reporting to the Splunk deployment server. In our case, uh, there is only one from the Windows 10 machine. 
select it to add in uh, the selected host section and enter the server class name which I am giving as uh, Windows 10 victim right then click next um, and here uh, select the logs that we want to accept from the forwarder right so I am selecting everything okay then after that uh, click next and here we will select our created index uh, which was win event all right then click review and submit so finally let's verify the final configuration by selecting uh, start searching option uh, so here with the search uh, app uh, we will search for the win event index and uh, we'll uh, see if we are getting the logs or not so as we can see under the source types we have uh, receiving all the logs from the uh, different win event uh, source and also from the sysmon um, which is all this video was about so so this is it guys um, i hope uh, this video was uh, helpful for you and uh, you would have gained some basic knowledge about the Splunk and Sysmon integration along with the solution of issues uh, that we can face during the installation. So having said that, um, uh, this is the end of this video. Uh, thank you for viewing.